like this. Uh, well, once you have a kid here, you're going to get it. That's all.
Well, you keep trying to be real good, and we'll see what you can do, okay? All right. You got to be real good. What do you want with this one, sir? No. Oh, oh. Look at a whole lap full. What do you want for this?
like him. Jeremy. I mean, not Jeremy. Jeremy. Um, cowboy Jeremy, I 
system it tends to lift her foot up when you start to melt. I'll get her get her going here. See there went the foot up. Our br brave young men or women right in would like to help me melt this cow. I don't want to. The milk is produced and of course she, she makes the milk to feed her babies or baby with. But I milk all the milk out and put it into a big baby bottle and we'll feed Elmo the teat with my thumb and finger and I trap the milk in it and I hold it there and while I'm still holding it then I squeeze like squeezing the tube of toothpaste okay Seriously? yeah and, it, and the milk the only place it can go is out the end of it there's a little tiny hole in the end now what I'm going to do to help you out most people when they squeeze they still want to help milk all you have to do is take your thumb and finger and squeeze like that but after we're done um, can we wash our hands yeah. Okay. Who would like to try? Okay, take it. Oh, look, you there. Look at that, boy. Look at that person there. I do. 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 All right. Who yeah. else? Just squeeze. Squeeze as hard as you can. You won't hurt her. There you go. Hey, good, good job. job. You did it. Yeah. Milking the cow. Yeah. Oh, you want to try it all on your own? And you have to reach up there and squeeze it, not in there, but just between thumb and finger. And then you squeeze. And usually you end up putting a little on the palm of your hand, but it's warm. But go ahead and give it a try. Wow. Good job. Did you do it, Lauren? Yeah, yeah. she's great. Here goes Jeff. It's nowhere so All right. Good. Good. You want to try it, yeah? You want to try it all on your own? I guess. Okay. Add it. Okay. Good. There we go. Didn't even put it down your sleeve. Yeah. That's good. He's over there on the other side. Come try it. That's all right. <laughs> See, I'm ready. I think I will do it again. You do it again? Well, maybe I, we're kind of pressed on time. I need, yeah, let's I need to get this done so we can take it over and give it to Elmo. Elmo's a little baby. And we got to strain it and put it in the bottle and all that good stuff. Okay, R Lisa, are you keeping the keeping the, the bucket? And I'll get this finished up here. Okay, come on, move over there. There we go. All right. Look that great big tongue. I did not know. Yeah, if I'm good enough at it, I can make it foam on top of it. She didn't get milk till almost 10 o'clock this morning with the TV crew here, so. She's had a, not a real good schedule here, but we'll get enough for Elmo, I imagine. Right here. Come on, get the I think we must have a, a chap teen or something here. She's a little... For history, there's a... Lisa? For use as a dairy can house and washroom. Water was stored in a steel tank that is now the corn bin. Water was piped from the tank to that that was heated with Coleman heaters. Milk was stored in 10-gallon cans and cooled in a tank of water. There was no electricity for a refrigerator. Wow. I tap it on the floor, and she knows that means it's time to go. Show yes. off. She do your thing. <laughs> Honey, there's a few grains left. Come on, she will back up that. Katie. There she goes. Yeah, she nearly fits that. Yeah, when she's. Oh, you yeah, really get your hat up.
the one I milked or like uh, milking her so late this morning I should have probably waited longer. But it all comes out about the same. I wasn't kidding. People really buy that milk. Yeah, I, I uh, they're probably getting all kinds of trouble. But, okay, uh, this calls a half a gallon. And Elmo the calf gets this twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. And everybody, including my wife, wants to know why I just don't let Elmo get the milk directly from the cow. It's about the little foster child that the people thought they were going to get to keep, and then the real parents come back, and then somebody else gets him all that. Well, that's kind of what happens to, to the little calf. Yeah, but it's, a, it's yeah, kind of I gotta go. See if I got a partially empty milk truck over here. Yeah, it's kind of heavy. Why don't you pick it up and carry it? Anthony, is that I don't want I'll drink it. Oh, there's Jeremy. Hi, girls. Hands down a little. Anthony, get out of there. I'm going to get you two cows. I'll stand you right there. Oh, Jeremy. Jeremy, how do you know these two girls? Do you live the size of them? I know. No? But they are my friends. They're your friends? Good. Look at the tongue sticking out. Where's the bottle? Who's got the bottle? Okay, uh, uh, you can pet him. Just don't he's let really him step soft. on a foot. He's really soft. Uh, the back yep. end's not. But he's, wa watch, he is so eager. Yeah. Now watch what ah, he'll do. He stepped on my foot. <laughs> come on, Elma. Come on, what you boy. usually do. What? Yeah, see, he's butting me. He's saying, come on, give me my food. And if that was mom, he would do the same thing. Not <laughs> come back here. Come here. Come here. He got some Notice, oh, yeah. Notice his coloration. His daddy is, his father is black, real shiny black. But his mom is that lighter color. So he come out kind of light chocolate. Yeah. Like the puppy. Yeah, don't step on my Wood. <laughs> and this is the baby Elmo. This is the baby Elmo, huh? Cool. Yeah, but you got to keep your fingers locked around it, cause it just—you'll be surprised. You want to hold the bottle? Not real. I don't want to. I'll hold the nipple on it. No way. Feel him pulling on it? Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, he gets, he makes bubbles. He's lots of slobber. Yeah. His half-sister, Daisy, is out in the pasture with the big cows. And I thought she was going to starve to death. We just had a terrible time trying to get her to start nursing. Mm -hmm. him and I about gave up and turned her back with the cows. Oh, that big part kind of heavy. Don't let her pull it away. Oh, you're doing a good job. Is it a he or a him? It's, it's a he. he. Oh, no. I wish it was Do you know, Can you see Elmo's big, long eyelashes? He's, he has real pretty eyelashes. Yeah, but he has mud on his <laughs> Lift it back up. Lift it up a little bit, Lynn. Oh, there you there. go. Good. Look, there's a coconut ball on your head. You did it. Oh, look. That coconut ball. He's making it up. 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 Why does he do that? He's pretty nice, isn't he? You think you can keep him for a pet? Yeah. Oh, a little bit too big. He's about as big as Candace. You can name him a different name. You don't like Elmo? He's born on the 13th, so he's not quite. He's a couple of days short of being two weeks old. What uh -huh. are we doing on that? Huh? You want me to do it? And then hang it up, and it's a birdhouse. Or you can get the side off of it and clean it all up and make a dipper out of it. And they're called, those are dipper gourds. Yeah. 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 I think we're done. We scaring them? Wherever you are. You see a better one? Yeah. You see what's up here? You see that one up here? Oh, my. That's a turkey. Up there.
Stop USGS Baton Rouge, Louisiana. This is the front of the building. Looks very southern. There's a government car van. This is where I'll be visiting Dennis Dimchek, the person who does all the collections for the Mississippi River and the report that Don and I are writing. Don Goolsby and I are writing. Here's the governor's mansion. Looks like they've got guards today. It's Easter Sunday and they're worried about terrorism. It's looking very springy here. There's dandelions. Uh, yeah, I can see it. It's a mannequin, I guess. Anyway, that's where the Louisiana governor lives. Oh my goodness, they need to clean this up. Look at this mess. Oh, get on up here. It does look like a otter. I can't believe. I think he has a heyday out here. I'll have to ask about this tomorrow.
I don't know what this thing is in this scuzzy water. Here's the creepy trees. Yeah. What what are those called? What kind of trees are they? Cypress trees. You don't have those in Texas though, do you? Here's the Capitol building. There's the top of it with a flag on top. soldier. Looking out from the front of the Capitol building. River. Looking to the west, that's the Interstate 10 bridge going across. Interesting buildings of Baton Rouge. And there we are, having fun. Aaron, this is down on the river. You think the warhead, you think just the tip of it? It's the igniters on that tip is. The bomb itself is the canister. Yeah, but what about it? It's got a fuel to drive. You know, there's not much of that in there. You don't think so? Here we are back on the Mississippi. And there's a barge with Pushing five little barges. Can't see what it is. Can you tell what's on there? It's so far away. I guess it's just plastic. that was built in the 1850s. It is now a disease center used by the U.S. Public Health Service. I wonder if that brick is original. Mississippi River in Louisiana. They're all buried in a out of the ground kind of what do you call these things? Vaults. What is that laying on there? That's weird. 
weird, isn't it? So it's just a normal thing down here because of so much water, huh? Well, we've seen these in Key West, but I didn't know they had them here. There's a different one. Painted silver. Hmm. Here's an antebellum home. It's a plantation house that was built in 1817. Seeing that most of these trees are pretty old, also. We are in Baton Rouge. All right, this is Dennis Dimchek. This is I'm getting a picture of your Nakwa shirt. Anything you want to say about this? I don't know the stage right now. I know the river's up and it's going to be up. This is really the beginning of the spring flush. Um, for example, that destroyer over there, you can see the land underneath it. Oh, yeah. And when the river rises, the, the uh, destroyer rises out of its cradle. Mm -hmm. So right now it's floating. And uh, by September, those will be just in this large cradle and resting on dry land. It looks kind of strange. You wonder how they managed to get it on the cradle. Unless you know that the river rises. So, what we're looking at here is the Mississippi River. And Dennis has brought me down here so I can see right where we collect those samples that we've been trying to write about since 1995. And he says right here is where we do it. So, interesting. It's a little bit gray day. Things are busy and noisy. Yeah, let me see. Oh, I would never had them.
do a Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what you got here? So explain to us what's. Uh, <laughs> You can do anything when you're under duress. Our calibration What's complicated? What's it all mean? I don't have the long either. He just typed it right on the computer. Yeah. You have the methanol. You wash it off. All the C8 in cartridge dissolves. <laughs> I just want to know if you know what you're talking about. Substance. What's out in the air? Because you got to catch it to the man. The problem is, show the glass. Aaron? Mm hmm. <laughs> This might be a little bit hard to read. Yeah. What happened to this? The numbers. These are anecdotal chicken wings. Yeah, go ahead, put that off. Alright, just a moment. So, here we have this is a centimeter cube of glass. Anecdotal in the dark. Organization and long range transport herbicides and precipitation in the Midwestern and Northeastern United States by Don Wolfe, Mike Thurman, Mike Thomas, Mike Meyer, and Phil Pythagoras. And it will be presented by Don Wolfe.